Hello, I'm Voltaire Tupas. Welcome to Raptor Talk. Yesterday, Judy Tagiwalo was the top trending topic on Twitter, but today she's with us in the flesh um, after the decision of the Commission on Appointments, which rejected her appointment as the Secretary, the secretary of the DSWD. Welcome to Raptor Talk, Secretary. Thank you, Voltaire. I always appreciated the fact that you have helped us disseminate information to ESWD assistance to victims of calamity. It's my pleasure on behalf of Move Page and Raptor. But how are you taking uh, the decision of the Commission on Appointments? We've received uh, feedback from the public, from social media. For instance, this, there's a viral sp uh, speech of uh, the senator um, from Batangas. Um, he said um, that if uh, you will. Uh, you are in fact the the, the perfect package of uh, DSWD secretary. Um, you were trained by uh, UP, and you you're given your activist background. Um, you are the perfect example of a public servant. How do you react to the decision of the CA? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Senator Recto mm -hmm. for that beautiful speech. I particularly like what he said about competence. Uh, commitment and compassion. I learned competence in the university, uh, compassion as an activist, and uh, commitment during the martial law period. I think he captured that uh, uh, characteristics and, and in their sources. Well, the commission appointments has the power you know, to uh, accept the nomination or reject it, except that they changed the rules during the term of president administration. Previous secretaries have been bypassed as many as nine times, 12 times, but never rejected because there was no provision removing them, rejecting this commission on appointments uh, instituted that rule, okay? And so, you know, I, I follow the rules, except that I would have wanted an explanation why they decided to reject me. And there was no such explanation. Mm -hmm. Actually, I appreciated the fact that those who voted for me explained their votes. Mm -hmm. But given my service for one year, I would have expected candor mm -hmm. and frankness from the members who voted against my uh, nomination. Which is being demanded by the public. Now on social media, you would see posts asking those who voted against your um, the, the approval of your appointment, um, but to you, um, do you do you think um, is it, it, it it's because of your um, association with the left because that's being raised? Um, for instance, one member um, raised it in an interview, saying that's one factor your association with the left. Well, that's the reason why the president nominated. That has not never been a secret. From the beginning, the president said he wanted an exclusive uh, government and he wanted nominations from the left, and I was nominated. Uh, two, when he announced the, uh, his choice of cabinet members, he said, I have selected men and I add women of integrity, competence, and love of country. So regardless of their label. So I think that's two, my track record would show uh, is being uh, categorized as left a deterrent in providing good public service? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I abused the resources and, uh, of this office, of this department, for the people, especially those mandated to be our clientele, our beneficiaries. A CA member told uh, Rappler that prior to the hearing, lawmakers were briefed by the AFP or by the PNP um, and they're saying that uh, the agency has been used to recruit NPAs or use the resources to... Well, they never the open it. I think I deserve due process, you know. Uh, my record as an activist has never been a secret. I was uh, a victim of martial law. I was tortured. I was imprisoned. I am one of the beneficiaries of the Compensation Act for victims of uh, human rights violation during the Marcos year. So if the military had charges against me during that time I served as Depart as secretary, open it up, but nobody asked me because I would have been able to answer them, give me proof. I never gave anything to the NPA. I know the demarcation line. 
between the people who are supposed to serve and our relationship with the rebels, whether these are the NPA or the MILF or the MNLF. Uh, so I'm, I'm sad that, you know, that was not even raised during the committee here, the commission hearing. Let's talk about your background. It, it, well, it, always, it was always, um, uh, it looked interesting seeing you preside, for instance, meeting at the National Disaster um, and Risk Reduction and Management Council. For instance, the first time you presided over the meeting, you were seated beside um, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana at the heart of uh, Camp Aguinaldo. And given your background, how was it um, being there at that, that time? No, be at the, when we were called to uh, Davao on May 31 by the President, uh, we wouldn't, I, I didn't know that it would be announced the cabinet. We were in one holding room. So General Lorenzana was there, uh, uh, Secretary Sueno was there, myself. So I didn't know them. And then Kapaenga and I we were just talking. And then, you know, uh, I was asking them who, what was their background. And then uh, sec, uh, General Lorenzana, I, I was in Washington, I've been serving for. So, we ah so that's why you have rosy cheeks, you know. We we had that kind of conversation, and then even when we were there at the camp, uh, because I was so surprised by the hugeness of the office here. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, Secretary, how is about your office? Is it a uh, big also? Yeah, compared to my office. So we had a uh, beginning acquaintance already, mm -hmm. and it was informal, and it was collegial. So it never became like a deterrent to me that, you know, he was a general. So because uh, I had my role to play as a member of the uh, National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, which he chairs, and I co-chair the response cluster. How was your working relationship with the cabinet uh, and the cabinet members in particular, if you uh, recall? It is the president's cabinet. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it is the president who calls the shots. But there are debates, as you well know, debates internally or brought to the public. Mm -hmm. The first open debate would be the open opposition of Secretary Dominguez, Secretary um, Gina Lopez mm -hmm. even then, on the reported um, signing of the president of the moratorium on land use conversion. Mm -hmm. you know, after he convened for the first time, the Agrarian Reform Council, which was never convened by the previous administration. So that was one, okay? Internally, we had discussions about the SS suspension, about um, the um, gratuity pay, no? about uh, other policy issues, tax reform, for example. So there are debates internally, but at the end of the day, it is the president who makes that decision. Did you feel the president um, listened to you um, during those discussions and during I think term? in some areas he's conflicted mm -hmm. because, uh, for example, when we presented, Secretary Obial and I uh, presented to him, although it was my department that really asked him to prepare the draft executive order uh, for the gratuity pay, he, he was really, I want to make everyone happy. But I don't have much money. No, I don't have much money. And then there was opposition from the economic man. Sir, we don't have that kind of money. So, but I, I think uh, he wanted also to support our government workers who didn't, who haven't received anything at year end, nothing at all. This was during the Christmas time. That's why he agreed to provide two thousand pesos if when we requested for ten thousand minimum. So that's the same thing for the SSS, again, major debates. So eventually he agreed, but there was opposition. So on the one hand, you give the additional pension, the other hand, you're going to raise the contribution. Have you talked to the president before the hearing yesterday? Well, that was my great frustration mm -hmm. because uh, I had a feeling that I would be rejected. So I uh, set an appointment with him to thank him for uh, giving me the chance, but he didn't uh, accede. So I think that is my disappointment mm -hmm. that I didn't have the chance to tell him thank you for the opportunity to serve for one year personally, 
as well as to tell him these are major concerns in my office because I wanted to tell him about corruption existing in my office. I have submitted the reports, but I wanted to relate to him personally that I hope he takes action on these several things. Not I didn't even, have that chance. Not even an exit uh, meeting after? Not yet. Well, we don't know. Again, it is his prerogative as president if he wants to talk to me or if not, you know. But I, I tried. Uh, I, uh, I gave a letter to him thanking him for the chance to serve the people as secretary of the department because it is a chance that he gave me, okay? Uh, I also thank him for, you know, uh, instructing us to be servants of the people, for instructing his cabinet members to live simply, for instructing us not to be corrupt. I think those are the instructions that I really liked the first time he met us. I hope the instructions are implemented. Mm. Yeah. Activists are raising on social media that this one is on the president and as it is on the commission and appointment. Did you feel abandoned by the president? Uh, well, I don't <laughs> abandon. I think uh, at, in the last analysis, I think uh, he has the power to influence the members of the commission on appointments. Mm -hmm. Although publicly he says, I don't want to do that. You know, we are independent uh, bodies. But we have seen in terms of his priority legislation, uh, the martial law in Marawi, the extension of my, he's able, you know, he's able to call it. So uh, I, I think, you know, that uh, eventually he, he left it to the Commission on Appointments to decide on my case without his intervention. Um, moving forward, uh, because your appointment and the appointment of other leftist personalities um, was in fact an act of goodwill um, to proceed with the, the peace talks, how do you think will this impact the, the peace talks? I don't know. Uh, we are not. Uh, I I told the commission. I'm not never been privy to the peace talks per se. I've never participated in any of the uh, meetings abroad. But uh, he knows, you know. Uh, and he has always been saying that he wants to, even in the last sona, he wants to end his term by uh, ensuring that peace is in our land. So I hope he continues to pursue the peace process. Uh, we know that it has not been smooth, thus it's up and down, but the government panel uh, headed by uh, Secretary Bello and the uh, OPAP uh, of Secretary Jess Duresa uh, are still intent on pursuing the peace talks with the NDF. I hope uh, they will still talk. <laughs> Your experience um, with the left, uh, you, you practically brought uh, a different perspective, a brand of leadership into the agency. Um, what do you recall um, was your best contribution to the agency? What would you remember as you? Okay, uh, so I'm not good into this technocratic mm -hmm. thing about, you know, scorecard, mm -hmm. uh, output, input. Mm -hmm. Although I have an MA in public administration, I've never been into that, the log frame mm -hmm. of, of the U.S. I think the important contribution I have made is really translating uh, what the president wanted, you know, in terms of the attitude mm -hmm. of government service and workers to the people. So the yeah. basic is the hashtag DSWD my malasakit. Mm -hmm. no, it is a department that should have compassion, which was a take off of the president's tagline campaign, Tapang at Malasakit. And from there, given the problems uh, we met here, one is the complaint about the slowness uh, in providing service. We said maagap, meaning prompt. And may pagkalinga, prompt na may compassion. That's one. Two would be patas na pagtrato sa mga komunidad. Equal treatment of communities regardless of political affiliation. You know, we have heard, oh, we, uh, we are not supporters of the mayor, so we don't get the ESA. Or, for example, Kidapawan. The Kidapawan massacre, because they are Lumads, they are supposedly associated with the NPA, mm -hmm. but these are Lumad communities 
they have to attend to go to Ralph to ask for rice and in the process uh, some of them were killed and wounded I didn't want Akidapawan so that was an instruction if they are in need they are in crisis uh, then assistance should be provided to them based on the mandate of DFWD and three again a take off from the president's uh, uh, focus is service yung walang puwang sa katiwalian uh, uh, service without any tinge of corruption so those are the three things that I think captured what we need uh, to strengthen in the department and I hope we have started the process even then uh, we have found out the uh, irregularities and corruption even within the department uh, we have uh, done some several fact finding already and we have submitted the report to the president and what did you unlearn when you when you came here ano mga nagbago sa iyo at na realize mo ah, ito iba pala yung uh, ganitong um, environment compared sa ginagisnan mo environment sa academe sa uh, streets well yun nga siguro ang basic kasi sa academe although politics is also part and parcel mm -hmm. mas uh, insular siya eh you have mm -hmm. academic discussion tapos ang stakes ay hindi masyadong mataas limited naman yung budget and we do not talk actually about budget so much as about outputs ng publication uh, evaluation so academic ito service delivery uh, running a department with only 3,000 regular positions pero yung total na personnel mo ay 30,000 nationwide and a budget of almost one 126 billion pesos. So, malaking challenge talaga. Anong na-unlearn ko? Wala naman ako na-unlearn. May bago akong na-learn. Daming pera talaga ng gobyerno. Totoo yan. Totoo yung chismis. Kasi in UP, we're doing relief operations also. Ondoy, etc. Takes us like two weeks para makapag-ipon ka ng dalawang daang one, ano? Food packs. No? Ito meron. Libo-libo. Libo-libo. Titiyakin mo lang na wag itago yan <laughs> ni Kapitana. No, na pambayad niya doon sa maglilinis ng bahay niya. And we have those kinds of reports, ma'am. May naglinis ng bahay ni Kapitana sa lugar na ito. Tapos ang bayad sa kanya, sinabihan niya punta ka doon sa kwarto, ang DSWD Family Food Pack doon. These, so, yeah. These are issues na napaka-local, ano, pero ito rin yung nasa heart ng concern ng ilang congressman. Uh, malimbawa, yung kanilang reklamo na yung mga referrals nila, uh, hindi na-actionan ba din you clarify that? Pero sabi nila, even if you clarified, medyo mabagal pa rin yung, yung pag-action sa local. How do you react to that? Well, sinabihan ako from the beginning, we discussed this. Ano, mm -hmm. Sabi ko, uh, I will allocate money, I will allocate funds based on the GAA. Mm -hmm. no? So, ang sa GAA naman, programs eh. Tapos you distribute it geographically. Hindi naman sinabi, pupunta kay congressman ito, punta kay congresswoman na ganito, wala. Mm -hmm. di ba? So, sa, so, ang kwan ko doon, wala. But, sabi nila, meron. Ang iba, ang iba nagsabi na meron. Uh, so, that was one of the major debates na dapat uh, the people going to DSWD for assistance should have referrals from them because they wanted to make sure that the, that the money they placed in DSWD would go to the people they have referred. Di siyempre ako naman, bakit? May pera ba? So, I looked at the budget. Wala namang pera eh. No? So, yun yung area ng, ng contention. And uh, ang iba nagsabi, hindi naman ito, ma'am, corruption. Hindi namin binubulsa ito. It's patronage. No? <laughs> okay. So, ang sabi ko naman, okay, I understand na may mga mahihirap na pumupunta sa inyo kasi malawak kumingi ng tulong. We understand that. So you refer to us. Hindi ko naman sinabi na walang referral. See, you can still refer to us. What I said is, hindi kailangan ng referral from a representative to access funds. Yun yung pagkakaiba. No? Yun lang ginawa ko sa MC. So, tapos sabi ko, sige, tuloy ang tulungan natin. Pero, it has to be assessed at ang social worker namin ang may final na decision. And if you want, magre-report kami at year end, ano ang natulong namin sa distrito nyo. Kasi it is still in line with your oversight functions. Ginagastos ba namin ang pondo para matulungan ang tao? 
okay kami doon. Okay kami sa maraming kongresista. Pero may iba talaga ayaw. What does your experience, this experience, um, tell us about uh, the nature of the political system? Does it mean that it's not yet ready to, to embrace, to accommodate the brand of leadership that the left offers? I, I think ang, ang basic kasi talaga na question eh, para kanino eh. Mm -hmm. Para kanino in aid of legislation, mm -hmm. in aid of re-election. Mm -hmm. Diba? Yung talaga ang magiging major na issue mo. What are these programs mm -hmm. for? At pagkaintindi ko, para tulong talaga sa mga tao ito, nasa lanta ng bagyo, diba? Regardless, kaya wala ka eh, diba? Para sa tao ito, galing naman sabi na president, Pera nyo ito, sa inyo ito. You don't owe anybody anything because you have this. Pero kung lagyan mo na yan ng picture ni Mayor, lagyan mo na yan ng picture ni Kapitan, nagiging politicized na siya and the people feel they owe you this at kailangan iboto ka. Yun yung patronage politics talaga ang nangingibabaw sa atin. Pero isang area lang yan, di ba? Ang isang area kumikita ba sa ibang mga proyekto. Yun ang hindi ko na aayos no although may na stop ako na ganyan na sa 5000 na pesos na Yolanda assistance may report kami na si kapitan na humingi ng 2000 but we arrested that so it is always the challenge to make assistance to the people based on need uh, rather than in aid of a particular political person or black yun yung pagkakaiba siguro so after this, what are you going, going to do? Um, of course, you're not going back to the academy because you're already retired. I'm retired, mm -hmm. yay! Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know. Ako naman, di ako long term na kong dating. Sabi, basta magbibitch kami ng anak ko. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to visit my mother. I announced that ano, my, uh, my mother is 98 years old. She's in Bacolod. Um, so I will visit her there. I have sisters in the state. They have been asking me to visit them mga balo na sila, no? mga nurses. So I think I'll take a break also. Mm -hmm. After that, talaga, hindi ko anong matutulong ko sa mass movement. Uh, sabi, magrarally ka ba? Nagrarally naman ako, di ba? Mm -hmm. So yung isa nga, I had this, uh, uh, ano, ito yung test para sa, sa health mo, anong tawag doon? Yung mm -hmm. kinicheck nila yung stamina mo, so mm -hmm. may running kwan ka. Kaya ko pa nagulat ang doktor. Mm. Ang galing mo pa, mataas pa, mm. considering my age. Paano ka nag-exercise? Sabi ko, nagrarally ako, nagmamarcha ako eh. Mm. Anong minamarcha? Para tumas ang sweldo natin. Nag ah, okay, ma'am. <laughs> Tuloy niyan. Good for your health. So, I think kung sa usapin ng kwan, I have always believed that the mass movement is an effective form to relate to those in powers, mm. the needs of the people, speaking truth to power. So for a while, ako yung nasa power. And I hope I listen to the truth of the people speaking to me that they needed help. And I use that power not for my personal interest or for the interest of a small group, but rather for the people who needed them. So I've seen you in action um, in the field, especially during disasters. Um, anong pinaka-memorable sa'yo doon na naalala mo at hindi mo makakalimutan sa mga pagpunta mo sa ground kasama yung mga tao? Hindi ang natutuwa talaga ako kapag sabihin, Sek, kayong first secretary na ever pumunta dito sa bayan namin o sa barrio namin kasi ganyan ang sinabi sa Kalinga. No, may pinuntahan ako doon ng barang. Maliit talaga siya. After ng lawin to. Uh, after ng lawin nito, kasama ko si Secretary Sueno, tapos sa governor sila, umali sila, iniwan ako, nagaantay yung mga tao. So I went there, it's an interior, na nag-overflow kasi ang Juan Chico River, yung panan sa... Tapos nandoon sila, hinantahan nila ng, uh, may kanta sila na pang Girl Scout, say, because you're my friend and your friend, no? And they said, ako ang first secretary na pumunta doon, yung ganyang level. Ganyan din nangyari sa akin sa Rizal, Kalinga. Ang Rizal is between Cagayan and Tabuk, sa daanan. So sabi nila, ako rin yung first secretary doon. So parang ako, ang memorable sa akin, yung mga... Uh, areas na hindi pa nare-reach ng government official at nakapunta ako at nakatulog ako. If you will speak to them, because when you went, uh, when you went out of the hearing and then indigenous peoples and people from the urban poor community welcomed you outside the Senate, um, effectively, essentially, 
um, <laughs> confirming your <laughs> appointment symbolically. <laughs> um, <laughs> what will you tell them? Those who diba, I said naman, um, again, I would quote the president, ano, because that is also one reason why I thought serving with him would be a continuation of what I have been doing when he said, gikan sa masa para sa masa, from the masses to the masses. I think yun yung illustration ni, eh. I came from that group eh, no? The, the people's movement, no? So I came from them and I was given this task and you know, it is for them that I accepted it and now that I have been rejected, there will be other ways now to help them, to be with them, to be in solidarity with them. So yun, lahat naman yun, palagi ang sinasabi ko, I'm not doing this because of uh, charity or humanitarian reason, I'm doing this because of solidarity. At the end of the day, it will still be the people who will decide what kind of development, what kind of change do we want. Sila talaga, hindi yung mga tao nang usapin palagi, hindi para kanino, kundi ang usapin ay ano ang makukuha ko dyan. No? Again, that is the important question. For whom are we doing this? I think, uh, ako, I tried to show I am doing it for the people, for the poor. And to the DSWD employees, I always see you in the field. It's my first time to visit your big office. What would you miss about uh, this agency, the people you worked with? Well, ang OSEC staff ko uh -huh. talaga, no? Kasi uh, galing-galing nila eh, no? Mga bata, galing sa UP, galing din sa mga ibang mga communities that they have really helped me. No? Kasi we share the same, same values eh. Mm -hmm. Important sa akin yan talaga na walang corruption. Tapos walang sigawan, no? Naku, talagang. So isa yun na kwan na... I think yung kamaradery dito within my o, my OSEC staff and also with the executive committee of the DSWD uh, and the regional directors, I, I've learned so much from them. They have welcomed me with open arms. I'm just really sad kasi ang kwan na, na kung may bagong secretary na naman, anong adjustment kaya ang gagawin namin? It took uh, a while also for them no, to find out what I wanted and I know the fear and trepidation they went through when I was appointed. I think generally, uh, generally, and for many of them, not all, for many of them, uh, I think they found my brand of leadership inspiring. That's what they, they told me. So I'm happy. Thank you so much. Mga RDs, tsaka yung mga bureau directors and mga kawani ng DSWD sa pakipagkapit bisig para maibigay natin ang serbisyo sa mga mayan. Well, on that note, thank you for joining um, Raptor Talk and for serving the people well. <laughs> Good luck. Um, thank we've you. been talking to Secretary uh, Judy Tagiwalo of the DSWD. Uh, I'm Voltaire Tupas. Thank you for watching Raptor Talk.